Welcome to Kimmer's Gaming. In this, we are going to talk about one of the early tank combat games, developed by Retro Gaming Industry, called Battle Zone. Battle Zone was released first on arcade, and then later ported to Atari 2600 gaming console. The game was a descendant of the game Tank, in 1947, even though the direct descendant of the 70s game is Combat for Atari 2600. Usually, when arcade games were ported to home gaming consoles in around 1980s, the resultant port was inevitably a watered-down version of the original. But its comparisons were not usually overstressed by gamers, since nobody expected a perfect port of an arcade game in a limited hardware of Atari 2600. In Battlezone's case, this was more difficult. Since the game invites one more competitor for the comparison, that is the Activision's robot tank. However it doesn't compare favorably to that either. The game however, was a big hit. With the notable port of Atari 2600, it also had ports on Atari 5200, Apple II, the IC20, Commodore 64, Atari XC, Atari GE, Atari ST and Microsoft DOS. At a first glance, we will notice that the gorgeous vector graphics of Arcade Battle Zone is replaced by a standard raster display. But most of the other things are present, including 360 degree radar screen, enemy tanks, high bonus sources and zigzagging guided missiles. Off screen tank shots from enemy tanks are also heard as well. Even the cannons whizzing, are present when they miss. Certainly. Battle Zone was remembered for its detailed visuals and 3D like effects, such as enlargement and shrinkage of incoming tanks depending on its distance. The effect of being hit is quite remarkable indeed, as the explosion is rendered as a glitch in the graphics card. However, the deficiencies do exist. The 3D effect is marginal at its best, as the ground colors don't change much when you move. On top of that, the rotation of enemy tanks is not smooth. They jerk from one position to another, making it a lot tougher to judge on how much time you have at hand to sneak up on them. 3D obstacles that littered the landscapes in arcade version, was also missing. These obstacles were used to hide from the enemy, who would likely to get in your way. Absence of these resulted in a bit of an extra challenge. Although these large changes were necessary to port Battlezone to an underpowered Atari 2600 hardware, it eventually led to a decline in the game's charm. At least three different versions of Battlezone were programmed for Atari 2600. First was Battlezone 122 which had minor shooting and color differences. Second was Battle 132 which only had minor code differences. And the last one was Battlezone 525 being the final release of the game. Steve Waito and Dan Hitchens were assigned by Atari to do the in-house porting of Battlezone in Atari 2600. Dan's and Steve's version of Battlezone was planned to have vector-like graphics. This would have been quite a feat on Atari 2600, limited hardware. But fate had other things in mind. After working on the battle zone for a month, Steve and Dan were informed that GCC had also been working in the battle zone and had nearly finished their version. Carla Minensky was also programming an entirely different version of battle zone before she briefly left the company. It is not known what happened to this version till now. For some unknown reasons PAL version of this game had less colors and details. It is speculated that it was due to a rushed conversion job, but no one really knows for sure. As for the narrative there is nothing much to say here. We are in the middle of the battlefield with our tank, and we have to shoot down other tanks while avoiding their bullets. Coming on to its gameplay, we see that Battlezone is a very basic reflection of its arcade version. We could maneuver a tank with a first person perspective, over a large plane and we have to shoot down other tanks to gain points. This is helped by a radar which I have mentioned earlier. It is displayed on the right of what looks like a HUD anti-literum, indicating where other tanks are. 
The most difficult part is to avoid enemy bullets which although being very slow, are extremely dangerous and deadly. It is almost impossible to dodge them. We are free to make a 360 degree turn but it is quite complex to understand whether we are moving or not, so it could be hard to scram away from a danger. This was done deliberately because even a real tank is very slow. And we have to remember, that if a tank strikes us at the back, it is definitely a hit. When we observe the sound we find something quite remarkable. Atari 2600 has never been great with sounds. However, Battlezone has some quality music effects. Say, taking the example of the sound which is produced when a tank is destroyed, is perfectly done and could even be used in a 90s game, without any bottlenecks. Being a rather easy game to start off, Battlezone is somewhat still fun to play, and it ensures a great replayability. Hardcore gamers of arcade will find this port, goofy and far from original. But the other gamers who only played this in Atari 2600 gaming console, will find this appealing. In the end what we have is a standard first person search and destroy mission. Judging from its own pros the game is a creditable effort. Robot Tank does this better while adding the complexities of changing weather, day and night variations and other enhancements that we have come to expect from Activision. I loved the arcade version of Battlezone, but it is Robot Tank that beats Atari in its own turf. That is all for now. Have a nice day. was how it could be, the world would all soon see, the potential inside, the wave we could ride, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, I would turn into we. With a face-to-face -face meet, our thoughts would complete, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, our machines would be the key. The problems they'd solve helping plans to evolve, if this was how it could be. If this was how it could be, we'd make one plus one equal three. We'd be hiring more, and spirits would soar, if this was how it could be. And now this is how it can be. A place where ideas flow free, we all work together, and business runs better. When your apps all begin with a G.